What knowledge might save your life one day? Know how to spot a stroke. An easy way to remember is the acronym FAST. Face, is one side of your face droopy. Can you fully smile? Arms, can you hold your arms out straight? Speech, are you unintentionally slurring your words? Time, call an ambulance right away. Time is of the essence. If someone threatens you with a gun or something and they want to move you to another location your chance of dying goes up considerably if you agree to relocate. My father was an assistant DA who worked with homicide. He gave me this advice over and over. Years later, someone climbed in my car and threatens me with a gun. And I said no, took the keys out and threw them. It wasn't a conscious decision. My dad had just hammered his advice in so hard that it switched on. The guy gets out without saying a word and runs. If a canker sore in your mouth or on your tongue isn't healing in about two weeks. It might not be a canker sore. I'm going into surgery today, and they will likely remove 100% of my oral cancer, because of early detection. Don't ever stop performing CPR on a person until the EMTs take their body away. CPR doesn't wake up a person, it's to force blood to their brain to prevent brain death so that the EMTs can revive that person. Firefighter training. If there is a fire, crawl out of the building. Do not stand up to run. One or two breaths of smoke are enough to do major damage and require hospitalization if you get out at all. It may be warm where you are crawling, but standing up can cook your skin and your lungs. The smoke at eye level can be more than 600 degrees Celsius 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. If you can't see and don't know the room layout. Crawl with your feet, legs in front of you sliding on your ass, do not crawl face first. Or you may take a dive down a staircase in the confusion. If you're being pulled out to sea by a current, swim parallel to the shore while letting yourself be carried out until you're out of its grip, rather than waste your energy fighting against it. Polar bears have insane ADHD. If one is chasing you, intermittently drop clothing items like a hat or gloves. It will stop to sniff them. Normal prey animals don't shed whole pieces of themselves. The bear will be perplexed. I read this possibly on another thread or even on this one. If you smell something close to fish or even urine it's possible you may have an electrical fire. Electrical fires tend to smell like fish and, when exposed to high heat, urine, or maybe your cat had a snack and decided to pee on the carpet. If you're unsure about the movement of a tornado, put a straight object such as a tree or a street light in between you and the tornado. It'll make it way easier to see which way the tornado is moving. If the tornado appears to not be moving, it's coming right at you. Usually the only reference you will have is the width. If it doesn't appear to be moving but is getting wider, it's coming towards you, at which point you want to move perpendicular to its movement. If someone gets stabbed, do not take the knife out if possible. If it stays in, it acts as a plug to the hole and will reduce blood loss. Apply pressure around the wound as best as you can and call an ambulance. In Australia you can always make calls to 000 regardless of whether you have signal, credit. Your mobile will use any available network to connect you. What won't kill you in Australia? The wildlife. What will kill you? Getting lost in the outback. If you're lost and out of fuel, stay with your vehicle, move as little as possible during the day and stay in the shade. Conserve water, rip off wing mirrors to shine at any search planes. You can drink your urine approximately one to three times before your kidneys start to pack it in. This is absolute last resort. All snakes in Victoria, Australia are venomous. If you're being choked, turning your head to the right or left will allow you to breathe. Go for the eyes. Furthermore, moaning yes daddy and winking at the attacker may give you the brief moment of confusion and shock you'll need to make that strike for the eyes. If you've been carjacked and the carjacker tells you to just drive, take whatever chance you get to wreck. At minimum, you're getting emergency services involved meaning it's more likely they'll be caught. And there's a chance you'll incapacitate or even kill the carjacker. Of course, there's also a chance that you might not survive. But, if they're taking you to a second location, odds are you weren't going to come back anyway. Don't drive behind a truck with an open back that is carrying materials e.g. metal rods, logs, bricks etc. They can come loose and fly back at great speed, impaling the driver or inhabitant of the vehicle behind the truck. 
I remember reading in a Reddit post similar to this. That if you can't do a pull-up you probably won't have the strength to pull yourself up off a ledge and that has stuck with me ever since. A friend who grew up in a rough neighborhood taught me this one. If you're on a bus and robbers get on, you have a chance of not having your stuff taken or being bothered at all if you pretend to be asleep. For all that it's scary for the passengers when one or two guys with guns climb on a bus, it's also stressful for the robbers. They have to keep their eyes on a lot of people at once to prevent anyone from calling the police, prevent the driver from signaling distress somehow, and prevent all passengers from reacting in dangerous ways. If you're asleep, that's one person less for a robber to manage, so they may not bother to wake you up and have another wildcard to deal with, just to get your phone and wallet. How to make a solar still, it could be the difference between life and death if you're stranded in the ocean, or set adrift without direction, it takes contaminated or salt water and purifies it, materials, a wide brimmed, plastic sheet with optional fastening, any mildly dense small object, cup, sunlight, steps, fill bowl with contaminated water not to the top, Place empty cup in center of bowl. Fasten the plastic sheet over the big bowl, but not pulled taut. There should be some give. Place pebble on sheet, directly above cup, creating a downward pointing cone shape. Pointing into the cup, sunlight should evaporate the water up out of its contaminants and onto the sheet. It'll cling to the sheet, and slope downwards into the cup. Bada bing, bada boom, clean water. If you're being followed quickly try and hug someone nearby and whisper in their ear the situation quickly. Most people will just pretend to know you to keep you safe. Bears can climb trees, but have trouble running down hills as they gain too much speed. If you're being chased by a bear, head for a hill rather than up a tree. Or, better yet, know the signs of a bear and have bear spray if you, you know, like wandering around where there are bears. If you're ever charged by a moose, get behind a tree, they have about a 10 inch blind spot and they'll lose you. Swimming, no seriously if you life in a country with lots of rivers, lakes and bridges, swimming is rather important. If you're alone and start choking with nobody around to give you the Heimlich, you can give yourself the Heimlich by using the back of a chair or similar objects like the sidearm of a couch or whatever. Forcefully throw your stomach over the back of the chair a few times. Try to mimic the motion of the Heimlich push in above the belly button, then up, kind of like a J motion. Maybe not your life. But everyone should have basic first aid or CPR training if possible. My dad collapsed on Saturday morning when he got up to go to the toilet and neither me or my mum know basic first aid or CPR. The ambulance took 8 minutes to arrive and we only live 4 streets away from the depot. Luckily he came too. But there was a point where he stopped breathing. If he continued to not breathe 8 minutes would be too late. Please learn and hope you don't need it. Instead of needing it and not knowing. Direct pressure on bleeding is always the first step. Platypuses have venomous spurs on their legs. Married a woman like that one time. Never, ever, go to the second location. I'm sure other people have said something similar to this already but this is really important. If you get taken to the second location, your chances of making it out alive reduces to almost zero. If someone tries to kidnap you, do whatever you can to get them off you. Scream, kick, whatever. Your aim is to knock them out. Hell, to kill them. The more of a fight you put up and the longer you stall, the more likely it is they will give up and leave. If you do get taken, make a trail. If you can, drop small items like a watch or earring periodically. And if you are in a vehicle, spit around the place. Pull out pieces of your hair. Wipe your blood on stuff. Basically put down as much DNA as you can. If you're a pedestrian and crossing a street, if you can see the sun's reflection on the windshield of a car, there's a good chance the driver can not see you. That water you're about to dive into might not be as deep as you think. Lock all your doors when you're in the house. No neighborhood is 100% safe. No kidding, I work a night shift and was up at 3am watching TV, so all the lights in the living room were on. 
this is like a beacon for people looking to rob houses as they think the owners left the lights on to go on vacation. Had some guy knock on my front door to see if anyone was home before he busted in. I then heard the handle jiggle. Needless to say he was quite surprised when I responded along with three Great Danes. More than he bargained for and he tried to play it off as he needed a ride into town. I live in a rural area and there isn't a neighbor within a quarter mile of me let alone any sort of business. Wife called the cops but he disappeared before they got there. If a power line falls down on the ground near you, it's safer to get away on only one foot, to avoid a high voltage difference between your feet. I'd say the survival rule of three, humans can survive three weeks without food, three days without water, three hours without shelter, and three minutes without oxygen, helps get your priorities straight should it come to it. Three hours without shelter, that doesn't sound right. I don't think he's talking about like just being outside. He means like, either so hot or cold it's affecting your ability to properly breathe. If you notice a lack of small creatures or woodlands animals nearby, most fear human interaction but you'll know they're there. But if it is noticeably empty, then you're likely in a predator kill zone. Similarly if you see a lot of vultures circling, it can mean dead animal, or predator animal cache. So be aware of this when you're in the outdoors. If you are in the wild and stumble upon a big heap of food and drink, don't consume it in one go very quickly because it could seriously shock your inside. Asterisk if you are very hungry. This comment gave me the image of wandering through the woods and finding just a massive stockpile of moon pies and grape soda sitting in a heap against a random tree, and someone just hiking through the woods and deciding to eat the whole damn thing. Eating mysterious forest snacks is inadvisable for a whole heap of reasons, not the least of which is the possibility of fairy kidnapping. Look both ways before crossing the road. If you're starving and somehow manage to gain access to a polar bear corpse, don't eat the liver, it's got so much vitamin A that it'll cause an overdose and then death. Better to drink water consistently throughout the day than drinking when thirsty. Army boot camp taught me this. If you have to get out of a moving car then put one foot down and take a step don't just jump out, this will reduce your speed immensely sure you will fall over but at a much reduced speed. A stunt man told me this. Blindfold yourself and try to find the way out of your own house. You will be surprised how hard it is to find the stairs etc. Practicing this once every three months will allow you to find your way out in case your house is filled with smoke from a fire which can happen inside a minute. You can start a fire with a 9 volts battery, extra fine steel wool, a cotton ball, and kindling. Pile the kindling atop the steel wool, wedge the cotton ball beneath the kindling, and rub the battery against the steel wool until the wool begins to spark. Once it has caught, surround the kindling with the larger pieces of firewood. Of course if you have all those things you probably have matches and stuff too. If you are being kidnapped and forced into someone's car, try to kick out the taillight. This might get them to be pulled over by police. I've also heard you can kick through the taillight from the trunk in some vehicles. The instinct of wolves will only cause them to attack you if they can intimidate you into fleeing from them. Standing your ground against a wolf pack will be terrifying, but will eventually cause them to bugger off. If you're caught in an avalanche and buried under snow, spit to see in which direction you need to dig so you don't go the wrong way. If a snake bites you and locks its jaw, run its head under cold water. If you whip a snake like a towel, assuming it's done correctly it breaks the snake's neck, killing it. To get a dog to detach after locking its jaw stick your finger up its butt. Also works in a situation where you can't dislodge two people. A quick ball fondle will separate them. If you're taking blood thinners, you should know they increase the risks of bleeding. You should watch out for signs of bleeding like pallor, breathlessness, multiple rash, bleeding gums or nose, red urine. If you accidentally cut yourself, take great care of the cut. You could bleed out if you don't at the pharmacy today a regular patient died because she got a cut on her leg while gardening, but didn't think much about it. But because she was on blood thinners, she bled out during the night always question yourself, especially under the influence. 